All right then, Stuart Smith. Oh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. <laughs> and Madam Chair, I want to address uh, a, a section that hasn't been, uh, or, or a clause that hasn't been spoken to, uh, that I'm aware of anyway, and I think I've heard most of this debate, in Schedule 1AA um, in 4, which says, additional amount to be paid before net revenue is paid to Auckland Council. This is quite interesting. It says, and if an RFT scheme is established for Auckland under section 65K before 1 January 2021, then before paying any amount to the Auckland Council under section 65U, the agency must pay to the Crown, out of the revenue from the RFT scheme, the amount of $1 million. Is this legislation for sale? It sounds like um, the work that's gone into uh, researching this piece of legislation, um, it, the Crown is seeking to, re to recoup that investment uh, in the initial take of the tax of the fuel tax. So what will be next? When the racing legislation, which will no doubt come out from the, uh, the report that's being done, and this might be quite, of, uh, quite some interest to you, um, uh, Mr Mitchell, uh, when that comes in, will that also have a similar clause as this does? Because I think this is quite an insidious clause, and you know, I think that it leaves uh, governments open for quite um, interesting accusations. So I would like to ask the Minister um, to please um, take a call and um, please tell me the origin of this, of this particular uh, clause, uh, what, it's, uh, what that money is to, to cover, how it was calculated, uh, and you know, why is that in there? Is this something that the, that, uh, the government will continue with? Uh, so I'd like to put that to, to one side, Madam Chair. But I'd like to now turn uh, uh, to uh, GS, the matter of GST. And I think one um, section of this that hasn't been uh, looked at, and I think uh, Dr Smith talked about the Right Honourable Winston Peters making 200 odd uh, uh, statements about tax on a tax. And I'd like to offer Mr Peters an, uh, an option to save some honour from this, uh, find a way out so he can actually uh, uh, not look as, dis, you know, as though he's uh, uh, a bit tardy on his, his reputation, because there is, there is a way around this. And I would submit uh, that the, the way around this would be to um, calculate the GST on the cost of the uh, uh, of the retail price of the petrol excluding, or the fuel excluding, excise and the fuel tax, and then add the excise and the fuel tax on top of the GST inclusive price of the fuel, uh, of the retail fuel. That, and now why that isn't a tax uh, on a tax, as I can see the, the cogs whirring in Mr Mitchell's head there trying to figure this out, but uh, it is because, uh, Mr Mitchell, excise and a fuel tax are a flat charge, whereas a GST is a um, percentage of the price. So that's how you get a tax on a tax. And I think that um, Mr Peters, I'm seeing you texting him now, I think because it would be a, a really good thing for him to come down to the House, uh, put an SOP in and put this to, put this to rights, because uh, you know, it really is a serious slight on his reputation oh, that yes, he's made these, cra yes. these claims about yes. um, tax on a tax, Just and I'm offering them a way out of that. Not okay, well, the right. Uh, but it would be a great thing, I think, if you could, if you could get a, a, an SOP to try and um, sort this tax on a tax out, because it, it is quite insidious. And I think we see the same thing in the alcohol with excise tax uh, going on, and then you get the multiplier. It extracts uh, quite a significant um, greater income on that from GST, and that might be the aim. Maybe that is the aim of uh, having GST on, on top of the excise inclusive price rather than the exclusive price. But I think this is really bad um, uh, governance, and I can accept uh, it's been a long practice, and, it, and uh, you know, we're as guilty as anyone else of that. But this is a wonderful opportunity to fix this anomaly in this legislation. 
And I, and I can see, are you scribbling something down there, Mr Mitchell? I think that would be quite good to write that SOP now and we could get that in and fix this piece of uh, legislation, because I'm sure uh, there would be great support on this side of the House. My colleagues would all join me in voting for that SOP uh, to sort that anomaly out and get this bill in much better shape than it already is. So with that, I thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, Todd Muller. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's, um...